Hi guys, so I'm doing something a little bit different for this year's Inktober sketchbook tour. Hopefully the sound isn't appallingly bad, I'm sorry if it is, but I'm also just going to try and make it a bit quick and a bit easy to understand too. So, I was really really lucky that my friend Emily here on YouTube is Emily Arts and Little Illustrations and all her names, I'll put the links there. She gifted me this lovely Inktober sketchbook with the Vivia Colours set and I did all of the work in this one this year and it was really nice and a really lovely gift and I want to say thank you again for that. And she even wrote me a little message in the front which was really lovely, it was a nice way to start off. So I wanted to go through the things that I did this year for Inktober. So for day one I began with this giant panda and it's kind of... Basically, this is my fourth year of doing Inktober and, you know, after doing it that many times, I just, I wasn't inspired by the original prompt list anymore. So I decided to do something that I'd kind of been wanting to do for the last year, but with commission work and with everything going on, I just haven't been able to get around to it. So I decided to tell some of the stories that I've been thinking about doing. So the first story I wanted to do was the story of the Red Panda. Now, I've been thinking about this story for a little while, of having the panda go around different areas of the world and talking to animals that shared a name with it, because, you know, a red panda, it looks more like a fox, doesn't it? So I thought it would be funny to have it talking to lots of different creatures that have, you know, questionable names compared to their species and just develop them all as characters and have a bit of fun. So the first one is him meeting his namesake, the panda. Kind of like comparing and contrasting it, but also introducing the character too. And I also wanted to show some of the things that I do at the same time, because I think sometimes when you just go on Instagram and you know I've cropped this and I've photoshopped it and made it look all clean and nice, it can be quite easy to like look at the page and think, she did it, it's all done, it was easy, it took her like five minutes and everything's perfect and everything's easy. That's how I feel looking at other people's art. So I, I kind of want you to kind of dispel some of the myths of, oh, you know, these things are so easy and I just fly them out and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's not true. <laughs> not that my work is perfect, obviously, but I just kind of want to give an idea of what comes behind finished piece like this and how I kind of worked out and did a monthly challenge like this, how to actually work out time. And the first thing to explain on that, sorry it's taking me forever, is that I do initial sketches and I'll draw these either in my sketchbook or like on random pieces of paper and then I blow them up on the computer and maybe clean them up, make them black and white and then that offers me something to scan in and to work with and I'll just put it through and you know use my light box to work it out and then I can roughly sketch where I'm going but yeah I often will begin with sketches like this and this probably takes about the same amount of time as it took to paint this to give you an idea of how long things take so yeah that's where these ideas came from and we begin like I say with the red panda and meeting his namesake the giant panda so blah 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 <laughs> for day two I have this piece here, the Arctic Fox. Now I was kind of working out like a geography idea when I first started this off and I thought okay I'll go north first, I'll go north from where they live. And I started with this like initial sketch here and um, yeah I really like drawing Arctic Foxes, I've kind of done them in the past so I think one of the fun things to do with them is to think about white on white. Because they're so well camouflaged they're quite a hard character to draw but because we had this line art and I could kind of be a bit sketchy, it kind of gave me the chance to make an interesting way of differentiating them from the background, I guess. And also with snow, you've got so many reflective colours, it meant I could go a bit crazy and a bit bright. Because, you know, what, why does snow have to just be white? <laughs> it can be lots of different colours, it can reflect water, so... Yeah, I thought it was quite a fun one, and to contrast him as well, to make him so clearly not part of this environment was quite a fun idea. For day three, I worked on this one here, which is the Bat-Eared Fox. 
Now, I hadn't actually seen one of these until I was like researching different popsis and different species before this. And I thought it was just beautiful. I, I think it's so interesting to see species that just, they don't fit in. <laughs> they look like they're a mix of so many different places. I think that's an amazing thing to see. And I liked the idea of him just being a little bit silly and trying to pretend to be a bired fox, trying to be part of this one. Because he's not as different colour-wise here, but you know, he just he looks nothing like him. <laughs> so I thought it would be a nice like contrast again for him. Uh, on day four, I worked on this one, it's the Fennec Fox. Now the Fennec Fox is an interesting one because yeah, I mean, I find it odd to think that people have these as pets, to be honest. I think it's a little bit inappropriate, but <laughs> I thought they are a very cute creature. And I really liked the pictures that I saw of them where they were all like piling together, these little cubs. And I thought, you know, it, it's always fun to see like the characters looking happy and, you know, seeing those things. But it's fun to also put them in different emotional states. and. I like the idea of him being a bit grumpy and <laughs> contrasting his character a bit in this one. And I was really happy with how the Vivias turned out for this piece. Because it is like so bright and so colourful. But you get these really nice patternations with it because it dries so quickly. You get these interesting layers that I kind of wasn't expecting. And it kind of like made a lucky mistake of this one. I probably will do a video about the Vivia watercolours and how they were to use this month and what I can afford them. I thought it might be good to have a review, especially compared to the other two that I've used more extensively too. I thought that might be useful, but make sure to comment to me if you would be interested in hearing my thoughts on the Vivias because I've pretty well used them every day of October, <laughs> so they had a lot of practice with them. And then for day, I'm already mixing up my days, day five. <laughs> for day five, I had a look at this red fox now. Like, I like this. I do not like this. I think I overworked it to the nth degree. Some of it's because it's a darker toned thing. I really wanted to go very muted, which is hard to do with the videos. But I also kind of didn't want to lose this nice line art detail, so then I just went way too far. <laughs> Damn lining every line again and again. So I wasn't as happy with this one. I kind of like the effect here though of the fur with the line art, and I kind of revisit this later on in the month. So it wasn't all of us, but you know, it's just one of those things, isn't it? You do something every day it ain't all gonna be perfect and sometimes the sketch is always gonna be better so what are you gonna do okay <laughs> for day six we have this one which is possibly one of my favorites of this month mainly because i just like this like teal color i think it's a beautiful color in the set and yeah this is the kit fox now the kit fox again i kind of played a little bit with the colors and the tones because i really wanted to have this blue red and then have them fading and being more camouflaged again. I always wanted the foxes to look part of the environment that they were in, so that's kind of like a main focus, I guess, when I was doing these. What I liked about doing this one especially, that I think does work better in the painting compared to the drawing, is I started trying to do these kind of sun effects, and the way I did that was I would paint the initial layers, so this thinner layer first, and then building up to the darker tones. And then once it was all dry, I would get my paintbrush and just drop one water droplet, let it like permeate into the paper for about a minute or so, and then use a kitchen towel to stamp it up. And it creates these really nice like circular things where they've stripped back the paint back to these base colors. And obviously you can use masking tape, get this beautifully perfect, but I think there's a lot of fun with water colors, especially and just painting to just be a bit messy, like go a bit crazy. There was no way I was directing where these all went. So they all just kind of happen naturally and then you end up with these really nice like natural droplets where they would go. And yeah, I think it's like, I think it's a nice way to paint sometimes just to kind of leave it up to fate and see how things are gonna turn out. And my camera just went. So, <laughs> wherever I got up to, all I was basically saying was 
I think it's just an interesting thing to do to kind of let droplets and let the pain go where you want to, let an accident happen because people want, I mean, what's the point of doing a daily challenge if you're not going to have something fun like that happen? So I think this was quite fun and I think it was one of the few times that that actually worked out. <laughs> so I was quite happy. Now for day seven, we have a Tibetan sand fox. Now, when I saw this and I saw the picture of it, I was like, I need to draw it. I need to draw that thing. It is the funniest animal I have ever seen. <laughs> you need to look up pictures of the Tibetan sand fox if you haven't seen him because like, he's just got the most expressive face. Like, it's just so funny. And really, I just felt like a little bit, I didn't want to detract too much from the face and from the expression. I liked the simplicity of the background and really trying to strip it back. I was also thinking about um, like a kind of like Japanese, but also in other Asian like brush painting. I was thinking about that and keeping things very simple. So I did that. I did try to create a similar thing as I've done the day before using the water afterwards. But with the black, it bled quite badly, so I didn't have the same level of control and I had to come in with some white pen at times. But I think overall this is quite nice. I kind of wish that my colours had been lighter, but I mean, that's really a comment about <laughs> the Vivias. I'm blaming the Vivias. They were very strong colours, and with the amount of space you've got to mix, <sighs> yeah, you're gonna have a battle. Anyway, so on day eight, we've gone a full week into Inktober, and I started with this one here. Now this was the first thing I actually drew. This is the first one I drew this month. So I kind of knew where I wanted the story to get to at this point. I kind of imagine this being the end of the story because I wanted the red panda to meet the first animal that I thought of when I thought about how a red panda doesn't fit its name. I think the main wolf is also a species that doesn't fit its name. It's very fox-like. It's like a long-legged fox when you see pictures of it and it also doesn't really fit in with its environment. It's a real like, I don't know, it's just really on its own and really separate and I think that's such a beautiful thing about it. I think it's so interesting. So I really wanted to have these two meet and to see that similarity of colour and to have him being above as if he's like guiding down and teaching. I wanted that whole flow down the image. So you kind of get this idea of like, he's teaching the panda a lesson of, you know, does your name really matter? <laughs> like, does it say everything about you? Do you really need it to all be perfect? Like, it's a more general thing about that, I guess, and I kind of want the looker and the person who's looking at it to think about that. Like, why is the panda making this choice? Why is he going all around the world just to check his name? You know, does he need to do it? So I really wanted to get to this image when I began. And then kind of when I got here, I decided I wanted to go a bit further, but I want to take a moment to have a bit of my drink. <laughs> Stop the recording for a second. So I'm going to show you the progress behind this one, which I filmed. I'm going to put it in here, play a bit of music. I really hope you enjoy seeing where this went and then I'll come back and carry on with the next part of the story. So I hope you enjoy that and I'll see you after this.
So, that's how this one was made. And I hope you enjoy seeing that. So on day nine, going into this one, this one actually looks, I think, quite different from the original sketch. And I think it's because I couldn't really give the idea of what I wanted to do with the initial sketch. I wanted to play a lot with the watercolours opacity and do lots of different levels with different layers of paint. And I think you can get an idea of shape when you sketch, but you can't really get that information across on watercolour work. So that was something I really enjoyed playing with. And this is kind of oh, like, it's hard because it's kind of based on something from last year. But that thing from last year was actually this idea, but I didn't have time to do the full story. <laughs> so this is how I wanted to end the story because this was kind of how I imagined almost if this was a book, what the front cover would look like. I wanted to have this lovely moment of the red panda just being able to relax and enjoy himself and actually be content. He doesn't have anything to worry about anymore. He'd learned the lesson of, you know, he's okay being who he is. So that was the end of the red panda story and I really hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed kind of playing with this very fine line ink work and watercolour. A lot of the inspiration of that was following things like um, the original illustrations in the A.A. Milne Winnie the Pooh series. That kind of style of very like, you know, basic watercolour and thin line art and stuff like that. I really loved that style so I was kind of inspired by that and I wanted to try that style for at least a week. But <laughs> like anything, it's a month long challenge and I didn't really want to get stuck on just one style and one way of doing things. So, as you can see, I went a bit crazy with my drawing for this one. I get lazier as the month goes on. <laughs> so, you will know, or I don't know which one will get released first, but this is actually, I would say my favorite piece of the month. I really like how this one turned out and it really kind of reflects back to me a lot of art that I've done over the last few years. It kind of feels like an amalgamation of those that have all kind of come together to make this piece. So I was really happy with how this turned out. I really like the colours as well. I think the colours are really beautiful. I like having this like viridian greens and purples. I think they kind of clash over that blue tone. And I think there's just something quite nice about having shadow as one colour, light as another, and then just clashing them together and making something quite I don't know, kind of strong. It's kind of a bit like two-tone, isn't it? I guess three-tone with a Y, but <laughs> I think this is... I don't know, I like how this one turned out. I think it gave a feeling of mystery and eeriness. And if you want to see the process behind this one, I'm going to feature that in my Prompt Squad video, which, like I say, I'm not sure if it'll be out before or after, but you'll be able to see this and all the other members of Prompt Squad's amazing work over in Tova. So I really hope you'll check that out. So, to carry on. So we're getting into the Swamp Witch's story. We've met the Swamp Witch. And this time I kind of wanted more to give an idea of what the base colours were, what she actually looked like. So I wanted to show these like warmer browns and different tones and then contrast that with green. I wanted to try and bring these really natural colours together. And also, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this yet, but I was trying to work through a lot of different types of prompt lists. I looked at a lot of different artists and what they were doing, what their list said for the day, and I kind of just mixed them all together, like shooting star, moss, forest, stars, cat. I would try and like bring them all together and think about like what kind of story could we tell with the Swamp Witch as I went day by day. So that was a lot of fun and I really liked making her a little familiar and drawing these cheeky crocodiles. I really like how their faces turned out. And just enjoying the patterns as well, getting to play with pattern and shape when it comes to water and just different ways of illustrating things in nature, I guess, can be quite fun to imagine. And especially again, I'm playing with blue as light and white with light and just seeing how these things happen with shade and stuff like that. I prefer when shading isn't gray if you know what I mean. I think it's fun to have it as a different colour. And now we finally found what she's in the swamp for. So I called this one the ghost orchid. It's actually based on a real orchid that grows in a swamp in, I think it's Louisiana, but it's a very like rare form of orchid, very like beautiful and ghostly. 
There's actually a movie that I've watched that talks about it. It's, um, it's a really good film. It's by the guy who did John Malkovich. And that was kind of, I'd watched that quite recently when I was drawing this. And there's a whole section, it's basically like a, a recreation or an adaption of a book. Uh, but then it's playing with the idea of somebody writing an adaption of a book. And in that book is about a woman who's really interested in capturing this ghost orchid and what it means in her life. So I really wanted to play with the idea of the ghost orchid just because I thought it was a really beautiful plant anyway. But also I thought it was such an interesting thing to find in a swamp that's something so delicate. And I mean, they're amazing orchids anyway. The fact that they don't need soil and they grow off tree bark, I think they're a really interesting plant. So I kind of like the idea of making it even more magical. Like there's something extremely magical of finding this thing growing in the middle of a swamp as if it's one of a kind. Um, I kind of wish I changed the colours for this, but at the same time, I guess it's kind of nice to have something that's very warm brown tone after everything's been very blue and purple. So maybe it's okay, but I kind of wish that I'd gone maybe a blue again <laughs> and whites and greens. I think it would have been nice to have them work with it, but you live and you learn. That's how it is. <laughs> okay, so the next one, obviously, I was upset about yesterday. <laughs> I decided to go to blue after that mess up of brown. And this is her collecting the different orchid and she's there using the snake familiar to come and capture it. Because, you know, I had this idea that she couldn't touch it with her own bare hands, it was that rare. And um, yeah, I just like how this one turned out. I like the different tones. I think there are some really nice blue tones in this Vivia set and I think they do kind of blend really beautifully when you keep them very wet. I think they've got a nice like tone to them and they create some really nice lighting effects when you play with them. So yeah, I was really happy with how that one turned out. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to speed up because I'm taking forever. Okay, so for day 14, I was getting onto about the fifth day. Again, I don't know what it is about the white pen. <laughs> I get like, oh, I just, I get it with the dark colours and I'm thinking, okay, let's use the nice dark colours, let's try the tones. And then I'm just so worried that details and everything are beginning to get like missing and blurred that I crack out the white pen and then I'm just not happy with how it turns out. I just think it gets too bitty. I don't know. like. I just don't like when things are over-rendered and I feel like this is over-rendered. I did like the orange tones and the glow here. I think it would have been nice to try and bring it out more in the tree bark and in the water. I think it would have been good to begin with more of an orange base. I began with a green base as you can probably tell. And I think an orange base and then building up to green would have been smarter and I wouldn't have had to do this. So that's kind of the lesson learned from this. I think knowing to always start with light colours even when you know you're going to do something in silhouette is really a good way to go. I think you kind of need to take that moment and I think I maybe got a little bit too eager thinking oh well this is dark only other than these parts and then I didn't think about the fact like oh I want reflected light later though don't I? So yeah it's one of those things. If I'd done it digitally I could have fixed it couldn't I? But <laughs> it's the fun of traditional art I guess. Always start with light colours. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so day 15, I had this one, which is the Swampy Witch's Potion Brew. So in this, I was really happy with how the sketch turned out for this one, just to show it a bit better. I had this whole plan, you can see I've like lined it out, I knew I wanted it centralised, this like potion and the ghost orchid to be the focus. But then I wanted to add this mixture of maybe the little things we've seen from inside the swamp. Maybe just questionable, unsure things like, what are they? You know, I like this idea of having like a trapped, like, a space system. I don't know, like a galaxy trapped in a ball and it's got a sphere and different coloured candles and some of the things that were protecting the swamp. And you know, just having a lot of fun with all these tiny details. I think especially with the way I was doing this, of using the brush pen instead of the line pen. I had a lot more fun with creating these curved shapes and you know creating a nice flow to the whole shape of it. So I had a lot of fun drawing this one. 
I wasn't this happy with the colours. You will see, as I do have a recording of this that I'm going to put up in a second, for you to see how this went down. I kind of began with the purple tone and later added the orange. And I kind of wish I had just stayed with um, those two complementary colours, contrasting colours, blah, 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 blah. Because <laughs> I think that would have been just more interesting. I think the green is just one step too far. Obviously, they're all kind of in a colour combo, so they're not like completely against each other in a palette, but I don't know. I, I think that some of the nice line art, which I liked in this piece, gets lost because of the amount of colours going on. And in the few areas where I think it works nicely, like the orange and the purple and the very faint green, I think that still would work with a lighter yellow instead of a green. So I think that this is an interesting one, and I'm kind of. <laughs> Though I'm not happy with the end result, I'm kind of happy that I get to show you the process behind it because I think it shows like why you make decisions like that and then when you look at it and it's dry and you can like reflect on it, you learn lessons from it, stuff like this. So yeah, I hope you enjoy watching that and I hope you can learn things from it too because that's the first thing that jumps out at me and I don't want it to sound negative because I think this is kind of, if you, if you like art, this is a good thing. You know, you will draw things a million times. There's a strength in art. And I think the strength is kind of looking at something like this and going, hey, this worked, and hey, mm, I don't know if this worked, and <laughs> maybe I would fix this bit, and maybe this should change, and maybe this is too bright and that bit's too muted. You know, you can see things and you'll learn from it later. So, anyway, I will show you the process behind this one, which will go up now, and then I'll join you to finish off the Swamp Witch's story.
So yeah, I think that gives you an idea of what happened here and the thoughts behind it at least. And I hope you enjoyed watching it. So, to finish off the story, I wanted to do this piece and again, I kind of wanted to go back to what I did in the first one of restricting myself to two colours, but this time instead of using colours that drew together so that it would almost camouflage her into her environment, this one I wanted to clash it because I wanted to give this idea of action and things are moving and everything's alive. You know, the first one is very muted, it's very still. This one I wanted it to be loud and like moving around. So that's why these two colours were the ones that I chose. And again, I was kind of looking back a day, you know, I'd just done that one. I told you, like, I was thinking about, do I just keep it to purple and yellow? Would that have worked better? And often with these, at least in a sketchbook, you can see, well, what was I thinking? And why did I do that? And I think that the lesson I learned from that not being the best day is that I gotta make this one. Didn't record it, <laughs> so you're not seeing it, but that's what happened here. And I really like how this one turned out. Now I was thinking, oh, like, you know, do I tell the person who's looking at this what it's for? Do I continue the story further? Now we're on day 16, I'm well into the second week. Well, well in, I'm two days in. <laughs> and I was thinking about, well, do you? You know, I mean, I like the fact that this isn't something that you know. I like the fact that we've just followed her on the journey to make it and we know she's making the potion. But so much of her character up till now is for you to decipher anyway, you know? Are these her familiars? Why does she have all of these weird like symbols? Why does she live in the middle of the swamp? So much of it already is up for the viewer to make a decision about. So I don't know, I kind of want you to continue that. And I also, you'll see, did kind of the reverse of what I just talked about earlier of dri dripply droplets. <laughs> and I painted some circles this time just to bring in a third tone. I know, questionable. But um, I wanted this middle tone between the two. Instead of going green, so that we had a third clash, this time I kind of wanted to get a hue that was more between the two. And I think that is a smarter move, especially with these simple colours. So I would say, if you are looking to do super contrast, I would recommend, in this case, using a tone that is between the two colours, not, again, on the third opposite. Obviously, if you're a better artist than me, you will make it work, don't worry about it. But I think that for these colour tones, that was a better shout than going green for me, at least with watercolour, maybe that's just me, but I don't know, I preferred it. So this is more just, what does she do? It's up to you, what do you think her potion's for? Why did she get the ghost orchid and what does it do? I've heard some good ideas on Instagram, but I would love to hear what you think too. So, we've gone two stories in. And we're into the third week, kind of, third project, I guess, of the month. So this one and the next week or so are all based on the Inktivity prompt set, which I only saw about well, a week or so into Inktober by an artist that I really enjoy. I was like, oh, I love this prompt list. I enjoy a lot of the different ones and I've been picking these random pieces from them, as you can see, but I hadn't really like leapt at them. So I thought, okay, we've told two longer stories, carrying on for two weeks, I'm, I'm gonna burn out if I try to think of a full story. So let's just go cute, 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 cute. Let's do some cute art, some nice work, a bit spooky, a bit autumn -y. So I did this piece here and I really liked how this one turned out in the end, but 90% of the time I was like, oh my God, this is awful. So <laughs> I'm gonna show you the process behind this one. And I'm gonna keep in all the shots that ain't so good either. One, because I took a lot of bad shots, but two, because I think it will show how you can have something for like 90% of the time and it looks rubbish. But then if you bring in say a secondary medium, like I've used the colored pencils in this case, or adding a few layers of shading or adding some bolder pen work over the top, like say with this cat, you'll see that especially in the video. You can end up building something that does look really polished after it looked messy as anything 10 seconds before. So I'm going to leave you again to show you how I made this piece and I hope it makes you a little bit less angry. 
at the next piece of art you do where you're like, oh my god, this is awful, and keep you going on it and maybe thinking about adding more mediums and things to try to see if you can rescue it because I think this turned out quite nice after what I thought might be the first one I have to rip out of the book. So <laughs> I hope you enjoy that and I'll see you again in a minute or so.
Hi guys, I know this is a bit random, but as I was editing this, I realised that it was going to be crazy long if I left it all as one longer video. So I'm sorry, but I'm going to stop this and keep this as part one. And I really hope that you'll enjoy to see the second half of Inktober. I will probably upload it in the next few days. So I hope you'll look out for that and that you enjoy today's video. I'll chat to you all soon. And I hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.